You saw in the demo and the presentation today, I talked a lot about VMDR. Uh, obviously, uh, we're very excited about VMDR. Um, what I wanted to do uh, also is to get a customer perspective now. Um, you know, we've set out to address a certain challenges with VMDR, uh, and it, would, it will be very interesting to hear how customers actually are looking forward to some of the capabilities that VMDR brings them and what kind of challenges does that solve from there for them. Um, so joining us today uh, is uh, Daryl Peterson. Uh, he is at ATN International and he's joining us from Atlanta. Um, and uh, he has been an early adapter of Qualys and has given us a lot of feedback over the years and has helped us build some uh, very cool uh, solutions. So we're looking forward to getting his feel feedback. Um, so welcome, Daryl, uh, and uh, will be great if we can uh, start off by giving an introduction and uh, about yourself and the company, uh, and then we can go from there. Hey, good afternoon. My name is Daryl Peterson. I work for ATN International as the facility manager. Um, I've been in that position from January. Uh, before that, I, I was with the company on the server administration side. Um, I personally have been using Qualys for over a year now, um, my server administration, and also with now um, with my new position. Um, for those that don't know about ATN International, we are a telecommunications company um, located in the continental U.S., but we also have subsidiaries within the Caribbean and uh, southern um, South America. All right, thank you. So welcome again, uh, and uh, let's get started. Um, to really hear your views on the different uh, aspects of uh, challenges that you face with uh, vulnerability management. But before that, I wanted to make sure uh, that we kick off this segment by first addressing the current situation from a security perspective. So hopefully you are doing well and everybody you know is doing well. But this has really changed quite a bit uh, what our priorities were in security uh, maybe even uh, a month ago. And so from that perspective, I'm curious how uh, the current remote situation, work from home situation has really changed the way you are approaching security and how your team is uh, addressing that uh, with the change situation as well. Well, um, some of the biggest challenges from a security aspect right now is making sure that you can secure your endpoints. Um, as we have a lot more users now working from home, um, as you mentioned, you know they're not coming on prem, they're not coming on premises. So you know how you know one of the challenges we're having uh, VPN connections and making sure that users can uh, connect to everything that they need to be able to connect to, as if they were working on premises. Yeah, that's the top of everyone's mind today, right? To see how VPNs are going to address the, the challenge that we have. Uh, and you probably need a different approach uh, for that. Uh, but before we go there, right, I wanted to take a step back and uh, look at the, the bigger picture, right? So uh, today there's uh, teams are trying to figure this out with a lot of different tools uh, and different processes are involved in, in you know, the overall uh, detecting your devices, discovering inventory, vulnerability management, prioritization, uh, and patching. Uh, so how are you today with all these different uh, tools? How are you looking at this challenge and, and what's on top of your mind? Uh, one of the biggest challenges that my team face is um, securing our workstations off-premises. Um, you know, we have, we're the type of company, we have a lot of remote users. We have users that sometimes don't come in and check into our network for 30 days, 60 days. Um, obviously, by not doing that, they're not getting, you know, the, um, they're not getting the up-to-date GPOs. They're not getting the up-to-date updates um, for their workstations. Uh, that is one of the major challenges that we have as a as a company um, in, you know, securing our endpoints once they're off our premises. Certainly, and uh, you know that's been an interesting challenge even before all of this, right? The uh, working from home, uh, or rather working from outside of the office location with VPNs. The sales team have always failed that, faced that challenge, and uh, I should say failed as well a lot of times because they're not connected to the VPNs often, and, and clearly there is need for some sort of a cloud-based uh, approach uh, to that. Um, but you know, where do you start? So even just looking at 
knowing what kind of devices are being used by the different uh, users out there, uh, especially when they're remote uh, or even if they're not remote. I mean, that, that itself is a daunting task to start to and, and to begin uh, with. And so uh, it's not an easy challenge at all. No, that, that is definitely not an easy job. Um, you know, one of the, the issues we've been seeing, especially with some of our remote users, as we have been trying to get them connected with the VPN, um, is if their machine is not up to date, um, our VPN, you know, we perform a host check. Our VPN will not let, allow them to connect. And um, obviously, like I said, if they if they have not been on a network on premises, they, they probably won't have those um, needed updates that they need. So, you know, one of the things that my company is definitely definitely looking for or was definitely looking for was a cloud-based solution to, uh, to help us achieve making sure that these endpoints stay protected, um, whether they're on-premises or off-premises. So do you use some sort of a CMDB? Uh, I mean, how do you keep that CMDB uh, up to date? Because uh, that's, that's not straightforward. Uh, currently, right now, we don't have, um, we don't have a current CMDB. Um, that that keep assets um, realistically up to date. Um, we we are we have started to, to leverage a, a application um, that we have started to use, and um, we're kind of on the lean inside of going with using Qualys um, for the fact that with the the application does not have remote agents, so you know. Users would have to be on prem or on VPN for their machines to check back in. And um, one of the things that I've noticed I've been able to, to uh, work with with VMDR is deploying some cloud agents to some of my endpoints. So, you know, I can see them uh, checking in, I can see the inventory of them. So, right. um, from an asset inventory standpoint, um, you know, we think that this will be the direction that we will be going. Okay. So from a vulnerability detection perspective, uh, obviously Qualys does a great job and we help find a lot of different types of vulnerabilities across a different set of assets. And uh, today with the increasing infrastructure, uh, there's just a whole bunch of vulnerabilities that have to be addressed and a lot of organizations struggle with prioritizing which ones to fix first. So how are you addressing this at ATN? What, what are you guys doing to uh, get ahead of this? Well, I can I can tell you from a, a personal um, point on that. Um, like I said, you know, I've been using Qualys for over a year and, and a couple months now. And last year, while I was in my previous position, we actually um, had a project to remediate about 700 plus servers. Um, at that time, I think it was uh, the Blue Keep remediation was out, or the Blue yeah. Keep virus. Was out. And um, we were doing it manually. Um, we were using Qualys to scan the machines, let us know if we were able to repair it, um, you know, but we, we were in there as a team working nightly, um, manually patching these servers. Um, and, you know, the thing about it is every, every Monday or every week, begin every week, we had to provide an executive report and we were keeping, we were keeping, um, that in an Excel sheet. Um, what I've seen with VMDR is um, with the prioritization, we could have actually created, if we had VMDR at the time, we would have been able to create a dashboard that allows us to, to have a single plane of glass to go in and see, hey, you know, this amount of servers were patched. Um, you know, we have this amount of servers left. So, you know, that's one functionality that we, that I definitely see as a plus that we will be utilizing. Um, I kind of wish we had it last year would have made the job a whole lot easier last year. Yeah, you and me too. Uh, even I wish we had uh, delivered this uh, a little bit earlier, but you know, we had to build a, a lot of uh, stuff around the platform to really make this uh, work, which is not easy. Um, but going back to Bluekeep, right? I think that's a great example of why prioritization is needed because uh, you want to address a vulnerability like Bluekeep through a proper prioritization process before it becomes exploitable, right? Otherwise, it just ends up being a fire drill and everybody's jumping and, and putting resources into that one task at a given point of time. And, and that's kind of what was the premise and what we've really focused on in uh, with VMDR is to bring that ability to detect the vulnerabilities and do the prioritization 
in a in a very easy and straightforward manner so that uh, you know it it can really uh, hopefully make things uh, a lot easier for you um yeah definitely can see that moving forward um like i said um i'm i'm loving the cloud agent um i'm loving the the statistics we get the information we get back from the cloud agent you know, um i'm i'm loving the fact that uh for my company we we perform weekly scans of our servers and with the cloud agent i can get a report i can get daily reports on it um you know we can get a we can get a a, a ticket open up if a severity 5 or a severity 4 um happens to appear on a server instead of having to wait an entire week to review the report so um that's one of the one of the features that i'm definitely definitely think i'm going to enjoy with pmdr very cool yeah i mean the the agent teams would love to hear that feedback that that agent is really helping uh, customers out there uh, any anyway, one of the things that we focused on the architecture was really to have a single agent architecture that is extremely lightweight sending telemetry information back to the platform and that one agent is able to do everything from asset inventory vulnerability management patch management configuration assessment file integrity monitoring uh, uh, IOC uh, integration of compromise detection and so on and so forth, uh, because this sort of uh, so-called best of breed approach, where you end up having way too many agents, I, I don't think that that really uh, works that that well. And uh, you know, so I, I, I mean, what, what do you think, people today moving forward? Like, what do you think of this multi-agent strategy? And I'm, I'm I'm never a fan of having um, many agents on a machine. Um, many agents require many, you know, take up resources on your machine. Um, you have yeah. some agents that, that you know use very little resources, and you have some agents that that are very resource heavy. Uh, for the fact that we can get, you know, um, we can get asset inventory, we can get vulnerability management, and we can get patch management all in one um, one agent. Uh, I'm very happy for that. That's gonna um, and I think my my users will also be happy for that. Not that they may may notice, but um, <laughs> you know, at least you know they'll they'll be working a lot better on their machines without having you know several agents to do you know with without having several agents to do several tasks. You have one agent to do several tasks. The other thing I wanted to check with you on was the response. Right, it's, it's one thing to have uh, detect all the vulnerabilities and, and give a report to the IT team, but the IT teams also struggle a lot because taking uh, vulnerabilities and converting them into patches is not straightforward. That takes a lot of time. That takes a lot of uh, man hours to really try to figure out how a particular CVE maps to a specific file that needs to be installed on a specific host. And um, IT teams take a long time and they struggle with that and leave that organization exposed during that period of time. So uh, how are you looking at it? How are you addressing this challenge? Oh, so um, like I told you before, we, we, we used to do manually patch. We used to manually patch. Um, we would get the report from Qualys and review all the reports. And from the reports, we would go out and manually remediate what we need to get. Um, with the use of VMDR, I've been able to, to work on, on uh, machines where you know, I've been able to um, patch just not the Windows OS, but also third-party applications. Um, I've been able to see vulnerabilities show up, and um, mind you, I haven't been using VMDR that long, so it's not totally out to my in entire company. But for the users that I have been, um, that I have the agent installed on, you know, we're, we are able to see, I think there was a, a, a vulnerability that came out the other day. It slipped in my mind. I, um, but I was able to go in to VMDR. I was able to see in the patch management this vulnerability, and I was able to see that there was a patch available for it. And the agents that were on the, the units that are on agent, I was able to deploy the patches to them. Um, this is very, very cool. Um, love this feature. Uh, the fact that you have an all-in-one tool, a tool that's going to give you your vulnerability and um, allow you to patch at the same time is definitely efficient um, in terms of time. Um, I can't tell you how many times we've scanned, we scanned servers and uh, figured that we remediated it, and it wasn't remediated when we, you know, rescanned it the second time, and here you have to go back and work on it another time. So 
Um, and then the automated, the automated piece of it is incredible too. Um, it's you know several little, several you know several clicks, and Apache is deployed to a machine. Um, you know it's not it's not complicated to use at all. Um, you know, I think <laughs> I think I was in there using it um, before my um, before my account manager really got with me about it, and um, I mean, I was sending him emails left, right, center about it as I was seeing all sorts of cool stuff in there. <laughs> yeah, that's good to know. I mean, as you said, that uh, it really reduces the time from detecting the vulnerability to uh, fixing it, and and reduces the time the organization stays uh, exposed uh, to the threat. Now, one of the things you've been an early adopter of uh, so many different uh, solutions uh, that Qualys has. Uh, brought about and one of the things I wanted to talk about was the uh, customized uh, live and customizable dashboards and uh, we're quite excited about it these are backed by the elastic search backend uh, very fast uh, have you had a chance to play with it and what's your feedback so yeah I have I have looked at the dashboard um, and the dashboards are very very cool um, with the cloud agent um, you're actually able to keep a, a very real-time, up-to-date inventory of your machines that um, are vulnerable or that have been patched, all depending on what you choose to do with your with your dashboard. Um, I like the fact that it's customizable to to a point. Um, you know, I can I can say, hey, um, I can create a dashboard with a Dev five vulnerability, and I can see how many of my servers um, have this vulnerability. And it keeps a running tab as, you know, with the use of the cloud agent and the fact that the cloud agent checks in every couple of hours, um, you know, it, it keeps a nice running tab to help you know, like, hey, you know, we went from 30 machines today to 25 machines tomorrow. Um, let you know that your guys are working, your team is out there doing the thing or that your um, automated processes are running and working. Well, that's right. Our out-of-the-box uh, dashboards, uh, burn-down charts uh, really are helpful to track progress, right? You need to see how, what kind of progress you're making uh, pretty quickly in a, in a live manner. And uh, that's what those uh, burn-down charts that we have, they help with. Uh, now, another uh, element of this one is the human element, right? Uh, I think a lot of times the security teams uh, get hounded by the business units to say, oh, I deployed the patch and it still hasn't updated. Uh, I don't see the progress and uh, you have to wait for the scans to be run over the weekend. And so I think those live dashboards, which are continuously updated with the agent uh, and just self-service, giving them that uh, visibility, I think that uh, really um, helps kind of have them do a lot of these things themselves um, and so uh, hopefully they were easy to use i you know how, how was your experience i mean did you have to have a lot of hand holding or was it straightforward to use um i needed a little hand holding from the team um let me correct i need a lot of, i needed a lot of hand holding from the team um just because i have never um i never used the dashboards before in qualis um, mm -hmm. Even though, like I said, I've been using the program for so long, I've never had to go to that part. Um, I've always focused on, you know, going straight to the scans, the support, so forth. So to see the dashboard, to use the dashboard, um, I did have to get some help, a lot of help from the Qualys team. Um, they even showed me their support site where Qualys, um, the engineers on the Qualys side, create dashboards for you. You know, yeah. you can keep up to date whatever severity is out there. Whatever, if uh, you know a, a vulnerability pops up, you guys are already on the job creating dashboards for me, so that I don't have to create a dashboard. <laughs> yeah, we're here to help. I mean, that's the advantage of the cloud model and the community model, right? We we can create these dashboards and have them available. Uh, and uh, you know, you've been a great supporter and a great, great contributor also for a long time. And soon we are also coming up with a way to uh, really uh, provide uh, ability to uh, have customers actually provide and exchange uh, dashboards on, on some sort of a, a dashboard exchange or something like that. And uh, that should also uh, make this even more uh, useful because it's not just Qualys putting out dashboards, it's, it's users also doing that. So um, hey Daryl, so uh, we're coming up on our time, you know, great conversation, uh, really 
uh, insightful and uh, as on as always a very honest uh, feedback uh, we're looking forward to incorporate that in our upcoming uh, releases as well so uh, wanted to check if you uh, had any last uh, comments to provide our audience and uh, folks who are here like you who are trying to figure out how to make this entire process uh, quick and easy and uh, be able to do more uh, given the times that we are in um well, i mean the only i can really say is you know when you you know try it out uh test it out see if it works for, for what you wanted to do um we saw what challenges we had um and one of the great things for me now moving into this position as the vulnerability manager um is that i came from the server administration so yeah. I saw what challenges that the server administration team had in terms of being able to patch. Um, and as that comes down to being part of our IT security um, you know, priority, the fact that I can now help my, my former team by providing them with a, a solution that does not only scan and keep a real-time scanning, but also can um, assist with patching, um, you know, I think I, I, I think that's a win for, for our team. So there you go. As, as Daryl said, it's extremely easy. So the best way is to try it yourself. So another advantage of a SaaS model is, uh, you know, you can try it for yourself. Go to the website, sign up for VMDR and get a trial going uh, pretty quickly. And you can uh, see for yourself and uh, give us uh, feedback uh, on how that works out for you. So um now, you know, asked uh, a lot of questions to uh, Daryl and he was kind enough to answer. So it's now uh, our turn uh, to answer questions and your turn to ask questions. So we're moving to the Q&A uh, part of uh, VMDR Live now and uh, would love to hear questions uh, from you. So Philippe and I are here and we're very happy to answer the questions and, and Chris will moderate them. So please use your uh, interface in the browser to send in those questions and uh, we'll look forward to answering them. 